<laughs> Hello, my love extremists. Welcome to the Origins of Love Extremism, part 2. I'm going to get a little personal this time. Even though it's all been kind of personal, it's going to go a little deep. So get ready. We're going to talk about some serious stuff. The first part of this series, The Origins of Love Extremism, talked about the period between 2015 and 2017, which was really an intellectual time. I was learning a lot, I was asking a lot of questions, I was passing out a lot of pins. 2017, everything kind of came crashing down. I ended up suffering a seizure in my sleep, waking up the next day and discovering I had a brain tumor, going into brain surgery two weeks later and discovering it was brain cancer, and then going through a complete life shift. I had to go through chemo and radiation. I had to change my diet, I cut out all sugar and carbs from my diet. I started going to therapy, I went to massage therapy as well as body work and mental therapy and psychotherapy. I started finding alternative medical practices that I could use to try to combat having an anaplastic astrocytoma grade three. So it was bad. 2017 was a rough year. But one of the things that I started to do, which really helped me, was I started to see teachers and healers and people who could just help guide me and help me focus on what was the most loving, self-loving thing to do that would support my well-being and support my healing so that I could live with a brain tumor. Because ultimately, when you get diagnosed with brain cancer or brain tumor, it's very difficult to get rid of them completely. People do, and it can happen. But oftentimes the protocol is live with it, figure out how to live with it, how to shrink it over time. And my agenda was, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to let this run my life. I'm going to let this story shift my life. And that took some help, that took some support, that took some vulnerability, and it took me going out and finding people who could help guide that path. And one of the first people I went to encouraged me to discover my perfect day and just try to live that day once a week to start. And then he was like, maybe you could live it twice a week or every day. And that was a tall order. It was hard for me to discover what my perfect day was. I never had that opportunity to even think about it before. But as I started to cultivate it, first I was going to radiation. So it was like, I can't drive. Maybe I'll just take the train and explore what it feels like to be in public transit in LA, which is not something I had done a lot of or ride my bike, or meditate, or get out in nature, or spend time with a friend, or write. You know, there's so many different ways that you can find perfect days without having to jet off to some foreign land and live some life that's not within your means or within your daily operation. So I started to do that. And as the end of 2017 was coming up, New Year's was approaching and I wanted to do something special and I wanted to do something creative. I'd always been an artist, but I never really could call myself one. And I had this vision of buying a sports car for cheap, something off Craigslist, you know, a thousand bucks, painting it in a crazy way and driving from Los Angeles to Cabo, we had, where I had some friends who were getting married and back. And it was a crazy idea and I had to find a co-pilot because I didn't feel comfortable going alone and I was a little scared. I do speak Spanish, but I don't know how to fix a car and who knows what could happen. Ended up finding my boy Dan, who's this incredible photographer. He came with me as my co-pilot and we got in the car and we went and we made it down to the wedding. We ended up crashing this wedding at 10 p.m. on the night before New Year's Eve. Um, just getting there right as the dance floor was heating up. Had an amazing few days in Cabo and drove back. We only had to replace the tires a few times. And we made a whole web page about it called Destination Del Sol. The car was a Honda Del Sol and it was definitely not equipped for the trip, but it made it. And we actually ended up having a exhibition of all the photos that Dan took and some artworks that I made around the trip. That exhibition sold out and led to a career as an artist. I started to get commissions to do murals and do paintings. People were starting to collect my work, and I had the opportunity to partner with a textile company and get into Soho House and actually have my work on the roof of Soho House downtown. And I'll post the link to a video that talks about my process and journey through all that. But that kicked me off as this new life, so kind of finding this perfect day led to a new life as an artist. 
And I followed that path and that journey a little bit and I decided I was gonna do more of these road trips with these cheap cars that I could buy and paint and just drive and tell stories. So the next one I did was going back to the East Coast where I'm from. And I bought an old Volvo station wagon, a red Volvo station wagon, and I painted it in a crazy style. My mom helped me on that one. And I started driving cross country. And on my way, I invited a new friend out to join me for a weekend and wasn't quite sure what the vibe was. She was really cool and I wanted to hang out with her more, but turns out we ended up falling in love and she's now my fiance. And so through this process of finding my perfect day and loving up on myself and becoming this artist and healing through these crazy adventures, I actually found love and met someone that I'm committing my life to. So that was one thing that came out of that crazy road trip in the red Volvo. Another thing that came up was I was asked to do a radio show. Someone I'd met recently had heard my story and was working with a radio production company and was like, you should do a show. I was like, yeah, I'd love to do a show. As long as I can make the show a podcast. So thus, Love Extremist Radio was born and I became a podcast host. So now here I am starting a career as an artist. I'm also starting a career as a host and a podcaster. And now in 2021, we've had over 85 guests and every guest from adult film stars to rabbis to cinematographers and artists and rappers and people of all different stripes, activists, have answered this question, what does love mean to you? How do you define love and how do you live with love every day? And I've gotten this incredible library of answers and, and every answer is unique. Everybody has a different relationship to love and you should too. But the goal of doing this podcast was really just to discover how can we start to take love and define it and put it in actionable terms. And that could be for romance or for ourselves if we're going through a healing journey like I was or for the world and our purpose and, and for the planet. And I met so many people along this journey and along this way and through this podcast that helped guide me and guide us to define in a little bit more concrete terms what it meant to be a love extremist. And so coming out of that now, 2020, I'd been hosting a lot. I'd been actually hosting live circles. I'd go to conferences and events. I'd work in corporations. I'd work with teams doing diversity and inclusion, helping people start talking about love in new ways, start talking about healing and health, sharing my personal story and realizing, opening up with my health journey and help other people share their vulnerable stories, share their challenges or their experiences with mortality realize that purpose and love were so interconnected and so was death so was disease and those things can actually bring us closer together rather than drive us apart and so through this journey and all these circles 2020 came along and we all know what happened when 2020 everything shut down and so i started to host circles in digital spaces i wanted to do more videos like this but also host living room salons so we do it on zoom or gather people for conversations on Clubhouse, the chat app. And now we have a community of over 5,000 people growing every day on Clubhouse that are having conversations about love, about what it means to be a love extremist. So if you're interested in this evolution of what love extremist has become, make sure you sign up for the newsletter at extremist.love. Make sure you subscribe to this channel because we'll be talking all about what we've been learning through all these podcasts and these conversations. And check out Clubhouse if you're on an iPhone. It's right now just an iPhone app. Uh, but hit me up if you want an invite and would love to have you in the community. And subscribe, join me, all the things. And lastly, tell us what love means to you. In the comments below, if you have a definition of love that works for you, I'd love to hear it. We'd love to see it and it's a great way to share and exchange ideas and learn about new perspectives on actionable love and being a love extremist. So thanks for hearing part two. Hope that story resonates a bit with you and appreciate you being here. Peace.